fast. Two minutes. Two minutes of trolling. Got one hit. One hit that didn't stick. And then this guy did stick. Bell for Trout, Kokanee, and Landlocked Kings with Kel Kellogg's Willow Leaf Dodgers. Available in mini and magnum sizes at fishhuntshoot.com. Get yours today. Hey folks, Kel Kellogg here. I'm scrambling around today. I'm getting ready to go up into the high Sierras tomorrow. I'm going to go trout fishing and I'm going to a lake that I've never visited before. Um, so this seemed like a really good time to talk about pre-trip preparation and uh, I have three rods here and I also have a small small little tackle box here. Um, I don't think enough people spend enough time thinking about strategy, thinking about setup, thinking about stuff like that prior to leaving their houses when they go trout fishing. They hit the water and then they try to come up with a plan and uh, when you do that, you're kind of on the heels all day. You don't have a, a solid plan. You don't have a solid strategy and you don't come out of the gate fishing and fishing with confidence. So let's take a look at what I'm set up with for tomorrow. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about the conditions. An ordinary everyday fishing trip for trout. I'm gonna start out fast. I'm gonna start out aggressive and then I'm gonna gradually slow down and I'm gonna downsize you know, my lures to kind of match the temperament of the fish. But sometimes when you look around, you see the conditions, you can make an educated guess about what's gonna work, what's not gonna work. Um, the lake I'm gonna fish is up around 6,000 feet, um, so it's gonna be cold, the water's gonna be cold. Um, and we are coming off some very unstable weather. We had all that warm weather. Then we had Sierra snow. Um, we've had a ton of rain here in the Sierras and the Sierra foothills. Um, over the past three days or so, we've had gusty wind. We've had thunder. We're going to have stiff wind this afternoon. It's supposed to clear out, but we're continuing to get showers up here. And I can only imagine that it's going to be worse up at 6,000 feet. I'm up at about 2,500 feet here. And I've got gusty wind. I've got rain. I've got thunder. I've got all that stuff. So bottom line is, is we have unstable weather at a lake where the water temperature is likely to be, you know, 50 degrees or less. And all that's telling me, you know, I may be dealing with fish that aren't super aggressive. We've had this roller coaster with the barometer. Um, the conditions have been all over the map from sun to snow to wind to calm conditions. I'm supposed to have fairly calm weather tomorrow. Um, but bottom line is, I'm not expecting the fish to be super aggressive and I've kind of tailored my approach to that. Now there are some very large trout at this lake. There are big browns, there's big rainbows, and there are some bonus cutthroats which get very, very large, up to five, six pounds from what I understand. So I need offerings that will trigger strikes from you know somewhat lethargic fish, but I also need offerings that are going to appeal to to you know big fish so let's look at what i got here which rod do i want first i want this one right here okay this is going to be my my trophy rod so to speak this is one of my my yellow lead core rods i've got this one set up for you know quote unquote shallow fishing i've got the three colors and i've got about a 50 to 60 foot top shot and you can see right there i am already rigged up i am rigged up with a tui chub pattern fly Always a great bed in the high Sierras, no matter what lake you're at. It's got that black and olive over light coloration. It's just a killer high country bait fish imitation. That's going to be my big fish rod. I'm going to troll this. I'm going to start out in the morning anywhere from 1.5 all the way up to 2 miles an hour. And uh, that should work well. I just need to find a, a fish that's active enough to go. And hopefully it's going to be a big fish. So that's one lead core rod. My other rod right out of the box in the morning and uh, this is really no frills I'm gonna be running this rod right here out of my downrigger I'm not gonna be running it very deep but I don't have any blades or anything like that on this rod all I have is a trolling swivel 
right there with a bead so I can see where it's at. Um, I've got some 12 pound fluorocarbon leader material, about 40 inches worth, and it comes down right there to a slow death hook. And uh, I'm gonna be running two different things on my slow death hook. I'm gonna start out trolling with a threaded night crawler, but uh, as the morning goes on, I wanna experiment with my grubs. Now, I may take that slow death hook off. In fact, I likely will when I switch over to running grubs and put a more grub friendly hook on. Um, but I wanna try, try the pink grubs and I wanna try the red grubs in the high country because I think these are gonna work very well. Um, whether I'm trolling the grubs or the worm, I could troll in that 1.5 to two mile an hour range very comfortably. So, so those two offerings are gonna match up very well with my fly and those are big fish offerings. You know, you've seen me catch a lot of big fish on worms here on the channel over the years. And uh, we only need to look back to last September when I caught that big four plus pound rainbow at Shasta on a, uh, on a grub teamed with a flasher. Now. On my third rod, I'm not gonna start out with this one right out of the box, um, but this one here, this lead core rod as well, it is set up, this is my deep lead core rod, it's only got an 18 foot top shot, but this one is set up for trolling worms. You can see that, that slow death hook right there. But this leader, it's 12 pound test, it's a little bit shorter, it's about 24 inches, I guess, and uh, it's coming off of one of my Pro Series Fisheye Dodgers, that's the four inch rainbow version got the moon crackle tape and a big eye on the back big eye on the front um, but this one I'm not gonna start out fishing this one in the morning this is for as as the morning kind of goes on if I want more action in the presentation you know more flash more vibration I'll get that four inch blade in the water I expect it to work very well now those are my initial offerings that's what I'm starting out with um, as the morning goes on, I'm going to take the temperature of the fish. I want to see, you know, how the fish are reacting to my lures. Am I spotting fish? Am I seeing surface activity? Um, I have a pretty ideal area picked out. I'm going to launch into a cove um, that allows me to have access to the main tributary of the lake. So I'm going to work my way, you know, kind of upstream, just kind of see what the lake has to offer. Um, if these initial offerings fail to produce, Trigger Spoon Juniors are definitely close at hand um, and you know you don't have to have a trigger spoon junior but um, I, I would have some kind of a small spoon cripple lure dick knight you know wh whatever your cup of tea is but I, I want to be able to run the flies I want to be able to run the grubs the worms maybe throw in a trigger spoon something like that of course we'll have some flat fish we'll have some mag lips stuff like that but uh, I, I think my initial choices, the threaded worm, um, a large threaded worm, and that fly, I think they're gonna pay dividends right away. And uh, I don't know what the conditions have been at the lake. I know they've gotten some snow, but I suspect they've gotten some rain too. So I am gonna have a, a spinning rod, actually gonna have a couple spinning rods rigged up. One is gonna be rigged up with a slip bobber um, that I can pin a worm underneath and cast it up towards any tributaries flowing into the into the main lake um, And I'll have another one set up with some sort of casting spoon whether I go with a trigger spoon junior um, One of my speed spoons or or you know something else like a cast master or something like that Just something that I can cast to any areas that have inflowing water and you know Just kind of work a lure through the zone don't know if that presentation is going to pay off. I don't even know if there's any inflowing creeks up there, but there might be. It's been raining. I don't know, but I'm going to have a rod prepared and ready for the occasion, you know, in case I come around a, a point and there's a creek flowing in, I'm going to be able to grab that rod, shoot a cast up into that inflow, work it out, see if there's anything lurking up there. So that's how I'm setting up for my trip tomorrow. I just encourage you, whenever you're going fishing, look at the conditions, think about the lake, you know, think about your knowledge base of the lake or, you know, lack thereof in my case, since I've never been to this place before where I'm going. Um, but just kind of take a broad view, you know, and then apply that broad view of the conditions to your experience, kind of your set of, you know, fishing encyclopedias you carry around in your, in your mind and set up a strategy, you know, set up an initial strategy, set up a secondary strategy and set up a third strategy just in your mind. So when you get out on the water, you can go from one presentation to another, one area to another, 
you know, kind of work through the gamut, figure out where the fish are, figure out what the fish want, and, you know, adjust accordingly. Pre-trip preparation. That's what it's all about. Fish with a plan, fish with confidence, and you're going to be yelling, hook up. <laughs>